Hello, good morning. Welcome to the Clay Academy. I'm Mrs. Cherry. Today we are going to be continuing to make something to go with our teacup that we made the other day. We are going to make a little teapot, just like this one. It's based on the same pattern that we used for our cup and it has a little lid and this one I've got legs on. So get ready to make a teapot. Your first step, remember, is to get your clay. You're going to need a rolling pin. You're going to need a couple of your boards and tools and some water or slip, your scoring tool. Remember, you, if you want to use some clay, you can buy it at Marjan's, 35th Avenue and Earl, if you live in Phoenix. I use a low fire clay. It's EM342, made by Laguna. You can also buy it online at Blick Art Materials. All right, so your first step. Let me drop my camera so you can see. All right, your first step is to get your clay and cut yourself a relatively thick slab. So I'm going to cut about an inch thick and using your little cutter, and I'm going to set the clay to the side. Remember to cover it up so that it doesn't dry out. And then I'm going to put my clay on my board, position my board so that my rolling pin hits those boards and it keeps it a quarter inch thick. I'm going to stand up to do this and I'm going to roll. Pushing down to continue. Rolling, pushing down, making sure that your rolling pin hits those boards so that you get your proper thickness. Flip it again and begin rolling again. And this is looking pretty good. I think I need to flip it one more time. Yep, it was still a little bit too thick. All right, that looks pretty good. And if your uh, rolling pin doesn't fit this gap, that's okay, as long as your rolling pin hits one of the boards on the side. It will just turn out just fine. All right, now I'm going to take my pattern that we used. <laughs> Making a lot of noise today. Take my pattern that we used last time, and I'm going to press it into place. And this time I'm going to, when I trace it, I want to make it a little bit bigger than I did for the cup just a little bigger. So I'm going to trace around the edge of it and make it a little bit bigger. Remember I'm tracing, drawing lightly so that if I make a mistake I can erase it and start over. And it's just maybe a quarter inch bigger all the way around. Will work just fine. All right, now I can cut it out. Remember, follow your line. I'm using my pin tool to cut. If you don't have a pin tool, your toothpick or one of your other tools will work just fine. All right, 
then I'm going to pull my excess clay off. And save that. I'm going to need that for making the other pieces for my teapot. Now, if I want it to match my cup, which I use this little gizmo to make my texture, so whatever texture you used on your cup, it doesn't have to be something like this. It could be a seashell. It could be the wrapping off of a pack of oranges. I got something like this to press this into it, make an interesting webbing effect. All sorts of things you can find to make texture. Little stamps, whatever. So I'm going to stand up to push this in. Stand up and push. And push. There we go. Now I'm going to put it together just like I did with my cup. I'm going to get my slip and my scoring tool. And remember, it's inside, outside. So inside, outside, add the slip, add the slip, and then fold over that edge, press it into place. Turn it inside, outside. Make sure I've got slip on there. And press it into place. So we're basically making the same cup with a little bit of a difference. It's a little bit bigger. One more, inside, outside, add my slip, press it into place. Now, because this is going to be a teapot, I am going to start pushing it out. I'm going to make sure my seams are intact. And then I'm going to press against the wall. I want it to be more rounded. So I'm just pressing out with my fingers. Just rounding it, pushing it. Make sure my seam is there. And it's, I don't want a leaky teapot for sure. So I'm pressing out, pressing out, doing the same thing all the way around. So I'm making it rounded. And push it a little bit more. Because you've got that quarter inch, you've got enough thickness that you can push it quite a bit. Remember, clay shrinks when it dries. Now, if I need to touch up my texture, it looks like I do. I'm just going to press. There we go. Repress my texture a little bit. There we go. So if you messed up your texture by pushing on it, there we go. I think that looks pretty good. Now. Now. Okay, 
Now, a teapot has a spout where the liquid is going to pour out. So I need to decide which side, where do I want that spout? And I think I'll put it right on this side right here. So I need to make some holes. And I'm going to use this tool as one of my favorites. It's kind of like a thin on one, it tapers down to a point, and then it gets bigger on the other end. If you can find a tool like this, this is really good. Now I'm going to make a series of little holes. I'm picking one of my little circles. And I'm going to push through. I think three will be good enough. So I've got three little holes there. Now on the inside, it's going to push your clay. So I'm going to go back to the end, to the other side and press down those little pieces of clay that come out. And then I'm going to make sure my holes are, I didn't close them up by pressing down. It looks pretty good to me. When you make a hole, it's hard for you to look inside my cup, but when I make, when I poke that hole, it leaves, it pushes the clay out. And so you've got to press that down so that it's not sharp, okay? So just press it down, smooth it out like that. Go back and make sure your hole is good. And that's where your spout's gonna go. All right, so I've got my extra clay that I, from cutting out, and I'm gonna make my spout. I'm going to take a, just a rectangle and now I'm going to wrap that around my finger. Just wrap it around and now I'm going to score it. So I've got my finger in there. Score inside, outside or you can do it flush but whatever you want, you want to have that, you want to have that slip there. So now I'm going to press it together. I'm going to put this little tool we just talked about inside and I'm going to smooth it. Make sure it is well attached. I can use my rib to go on and smooth that. So I have my spout. Now I'm ready. To attach it. Now it's got to be at an angle. So it's got to tilt up. If it tilts this way, if it's just straight out, that liquid's going to run out of your teapot. So I need to cut it on an angle and I need to make it a little bit shorter. So I'm going to take my rib and I'm just going to slice it at an angle. So there's my cut, nice little angle there. And now I'm going to put it right on the teapot, cover up those holes. I'm gonna score. And I'm gonna go around my holes. I don't wanna score over my holes. And I need some slip on there. I'm going to 
going to put my hand inside and I'm going to attach it. There we go. Nice little spout. And it's going to work great. Now, if I want to, I could be decorative around the spout, maybe make it look like a little mouth if I wanted to do something crazy like that, I could. Make sure it's well attached. Looking good. Now, some teapots have handles, some don't. It's up to you. I'm gonna check my holes here again. Make sure they're open. It looks good from the inside. Nicely done. Now I'm gonna add my handle. Take some of my extra clay, push it together. And we'll rock it back and forth. We'll rock it back and forth. Roll it. Keep your fingers splayed. That means they're separated. They're not all together. Splayed is like that. Rock it back and forth. Move your hands toward the outside and you get a nice even roll. All right, that looks great. Yeah, I've got a little break in there. I need some. Score that and put it together. We don't want to break in our handle. There we go. Much better. When you do handles, you always want to make sure. Oh, I like that. That looks pretty cool. You always want to make sure that your clay is wet enough that it bends without breaking. I'm gonna score where it's gonna attach. Score where it's gonna attach. Add some slip. Score where it's gonna attach. Up here. And I'm doing it on the outside, not on the inside, because I'm going to be putting a lid on this. So I have my, I'm pressing from the inside and the outside, inside and the outside. Nice handle. Okay. Now I have one more thing I need to do. If I want to add those legs like I did on the other one, I could do that. But I'm going to let it sit a little bit and harden up if I'm going to put legs on it. I would recommend that for you. You could make your legs now and let them harden up a little bit and then you could put them on later. Now I'm looking at my scraps. Do I have a scrap that's big enough for the lid? Not quite. So I need to take those scraps and I need to re-roll them. So I'm gonna set this to the side. And when we put our clay back together again, we have to knead it so that all the molecules get back to where they need to be. And we don't have any air bubbles in there. So we push down with the palm of our hand, turn it, press down, turn it, press down. And now I can take my boards and I can roll. Roll my clay again, flip it, turn it over. Do it again. 
I don't see any air bubbles. Remember, if you get an air bubble, and it's possible when you put your clay back together like this to get an air bubble, and we don't want that to happen. Gonna, yeah, I'm just going to eyeball it. I don't want my handle to come off. So, I need a lid that's about this size. The smart thing would have been to not put on the handle yet so that my lid would fit perfectly, but I didn't do it. Now, I need to get some newspaper. A big enough piece that is going to overfill your, your pot a little bit here, so that when you put this on, it will round. And I've obviously got, it's a little bit too big, isn't it? So I'm just going to trim it. Let's see if that's the right, about the right size. That looks pretty good. Very nice. Trim around the edge. A little bit more. Looks good on this side. Looks good on the back. That's pretty good there. All right, now I'm going to score it. I'm going to seal it up. What I'm going to do is let this dry and then later on in a couple hours or cover it overnight. Let it dry for about an hour and then cover it with plastic, let it sit overnight. And then in the morning you can cut your lid because your piece will be leather hard then. So I'm going to make sure I've got lots of slip on there. And now I'm gonna Press it into place. Press it into place. Because I have that newspaper, I get that rounded effect. If I didn't have the newspaper in there, it would sag. So the newspaper is providing you some support. And now, I'm ready to add my little decoration on the top. You've got to have some kind of decoration. Reposition my handle here. Sometimes when you have things like this that are um, seem to be dropping down and you don't want them to, you can take a little ball of clay. This is gonna stay in, in place, I can tell. But if yours is dragon, you can set a little ball of clay under there, let it dry for about an hour, remove it, and it'll be just fine. Now, on the one that I made with like this, has little legs, I could add those later, or I don't need legs, or maybe I just want little balls underneath it. It's up to you. But I kind of like that little cup on the top as a handle. So I think I'm going to make another one just like that. And if you recall your pinch pot method, make a little ball, poke my thumb in the middle, and make, I'm going to make a tiny little pinch pot. Just pinch it around, squeeze it, make it into a little cup. Like that. Little cup. And I probably need a little handle on it. 
Or maybe I want to make it into a flower, or maybe I just want a little ball. You decide. This is your time to be creative. So you can copy whatever I do, but you don't have to. All right, so there's my little cup. I'm going to put a little handle on it, just like I did on the other. Roll a little worm. And make sure that I can bend it, but I can't because it's too dry. Add a little water, do it again. There we go. Now it's pliable. And I'm just going to put that on there. Score where it's going to go. Make sure I've got some slip. Good. Score where the handle's going to go. Slip it. Score it. You, even the smallest little things you want to score and slip because when it dries, it will fall apart if you don't. All right, there we go. Nice little handle on my cup. Press my cup into place. And voila! I have a nice little teapot. Now, I'm going to cover it with plastic after I let it dry for about an hour. Let it sit overnight, and then I will come back tomorrow and cut my lid. And if you want to watch that, I will add it to the end of this video. Don't forget to sign your work. And if you want to get in touch with me, you can get in touch with me at kcherryartist at gmail.com and we can make an arrangement for me to fire your piece for you. Remember, if you want to do that, let it dry for an hour, cover it in plastic, and then get in touch with me and transporting it when it's leather hard, it won't break. But if you let it totally dry out, it doesn't make it very easy to get it to me without breaking. All right, have a great day. Thank you for listening. Bye. Hi, welcome back. It is time now. It's been a couple hours. My piece has had a chance to get leather hard. And we're going to cut off the lid. So I have my tool that I like for cutting. It's got a kind of a knife blade on it. And I'm going to cut at an angle. Just going to find a spot to start. I'm cutting at an angle. And there we have it. Very gently pull my lid up. And I need to cut just a little more on this side. I'm going to pull out my newspaper 
And now I'm going to trim inside the pot. Remember, whenever you cut an edge, you want to smooth it with your finger. If you don't, if it looks sharp, it will be sharp when it dries. And you can cut yourself on those edges once they're fired and glazed. So you want to be very careful with that. Smooth the edge. So I'm just running a finger along the edge. Very gently. All right. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the lid. Just right along that edge. Any little clay ickies that are there. I want to make sure it's nice and smooth. It's not quite leather hard yet. So it's real bendable, so I've got to be very careful. Put it back on. I did not put any water on it. And because it is still workable, I can push it back together. If I had put water on there to smooth it, when I put it back together, it would completely stick forever and I wouldn't get the lid off. And so there we have it. I've cut my lid. And because it's at an angle, it sits in there and it's not going to slide away. Now, I've also made some feet for the piece. I cut out some, or rolled some little balls of clay and I'm going to attach those right now. So I want to very carefully pick this up. And I'm going to tilt it very carefully. While I have it here, I'm going to sign it. You always want to sign your work. And then if you get up any little clay hangers on, get rid of them. I'm going to score in each corner. Score. 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 And then I'm going to score each little ball. Make sure there's slip on there. Twist it into place. Score it.
twisted into place. Score it. Just needs a little bit more goo. And one more. If there are any little things that you need to correct while you've got it at this stage, then that's when you do it. All right. And there's my little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle. Here is my spout. Thank you so much. Bye. Down.